Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Tampa Honda in Tampa, Florida. And guess what? I have that one top selling compact crossover SUV from Honda. What is it? It's this vehicle right here. This is a 2024 Honda CRV. This particular one is a sport hybrid L. But before we get into this lunar silver compact crossover, let's talk about what's going on here. The CRV, it's one of the earliest of the compact crossover SUVs. The award goes to the Toyota RAV4. That really is the OG of this segment. But boy, oh boy, the CRV has been one hot tamale, really outselling the competition. And wait until you hear about the MPGs that this hybrid powered CRV brings to the table. Now, of course, you have lots of choices. Lots of different brands, some that have been totally redesigned, some have more power, some have less power, some have more tech, some have less tech. What I want to find out is, do you go CRV or do you go with the OG, the RAV4? So let's go ahead, let's dive into this silver, lunar silver CRV Sport Hybrid L and find out. Right off the bat, the design. I think out of the last couple generations of the CRV, this one is probably one of my favorite when it comes to looks. Now at the front of the business, you'll notice on the Sport, you're gonna get some gloss black. The gloss black actually starts in this lower corner, but then it extends across the brow of the front fascia. Unique to the Sport, LED lighting, LED headlights, and as we work our way down, you do have the slimmest of functional corner air curtains. The one area I got a zonk is this right here. I wish that they would have put some LED fog lamps in there. Let me know what you think about that, but definitely, like I said, the angles and the size of that headlight housing gives it to me a, a, a sportier look over the RAV4 and over a lot of the competition. Now, when you come across that gloss black grill unique to the Sport, you're gonna see full functionality. Of course, that Honda badge, Flava Flav, to be proud to hang that thing around his neck instead of that clock that he used to have. And then on the lower section, you do have flat, flat black with the functionality. And you do have these unique design kind of air intakes, I guess for a lack of better words. So when you go sport hybrid, you're gonna get these designs here. And the nice thing is they are functional. Let me know if you like the look. Some people think it looks just stuck on with bubble gum or double-sided tape. I don't know, it's, I'm on the fence because I do feel it gives a little bit more aggressive look to the CRV. And like I said, the past couple gens of the CRV were kind of bland, a little too rounded. This one, there's nothing rounded about it, except for the wheels and tires. Those are definitely round. Now, as we rise up, that lunar silver, perfect for a moon landing on this hood. I love the way you have these indentations on both sides of the hood. Everything else super smooth, super slick. We come around the bend, talk about slick. Look at these wheels. Gloss black, multi-spoke all the way around. This is an 18-inch wheel. And if you're wondering what type of tires do we have, 235 on the width, 60 series sidewall. But the lunar silver with these black wheels on the Sport, I really think just really kind of pops nicely and works well together. The one thing I wish so many of these brands would stop doing is give me the flat black. I want this painted. Let me know how you feel about that in the comment section if this was all painted around the fender opening. But definitely from a style standpoint, the black wheels really work. Now coming down the side on the sport trim, you are gonna get gloss black on the mirror caps, LED turn singles, you have gloss black roof rails. Yes, you could get the crossbars and put whatever you want up there. The zonk that I have is that if this is a sport trim and it's all about blacking things out, why do we have this bright, shiny metalwork? This should be either gloss black or dark chrome. Let me know in the comment section how you feel about that. I'm gonna zonk it, because it doesn't match. But you do have, speaking of matching, color match door handles, and then the flat black along the bottom. I could deal with that. It doesn't come up too high. I feel like it's close enough to the road where it's gonna take a good enough beating and not like show a bunch of marks. Working our way towards the rear, like I said, that, that chrome trim, 
It doesn't work on the sport. That's not sportiness. What is sporty is when you get to the back, I love the way they did the tail lights. The LED lighting going really high into that rear pillar. But boy, oh boy, what do we got here? Who's in there? That's Thomas Edison and one of his old fashioned light bulbs. Why is that not LED? This is a 2024 model year vehicle. I would like to see that LED, but you do get the LED brake lights, which are nice. Blacked out on the badge, sport trim, tasteful, nothing too gaudy. But then what they do is they gave a CRV hybrid all in chrome. Make it match, make it cohesive. It's the little things. It's the little things that add up to the big picture. I'm not gonna zonk the wiper because this spoiler does not come out far enough, but you do have your exposed rear wiper. And then working our way all the way down, functional exhaust here, a little bit of a simulated rear diffuser, but guess what? A fake exhaust on this side. Why, oh why, oh why? Why, 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 why? I don't dig that. Let me know how you feel about it in the comment section. That's definitely a zonk. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and talk about MPGs because we got a hybrid CRV I wanna show you. All right guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood trust now. The good news about the CRV is you don't have to get a hybrid if you don't want to. You actually have a choice. They do have an internal combustion engine, no electrical motor. This though is the hybrid. So what are we looking at? We're looking at a two liter inline four naturally aspirated engine paired with an electric motor. That makes it hybrid. This has a direct drive transmission. So it's not a CVT, it's a direct drive transmission. Zero to 60, 7.9 seconds. Top speed is governed to 111 miles per hour. If those numbers don't blow your mind, that's okay, because this is not meant to blow your mind when it comes to acceleration and speed. Here's where it blows my mind. MPGs, remember this is a compact crossover SUV. MPGs in the city, 40 MPGs on the highway, it's 34. So 40 in the city, 34 on the highway, the vehicle weighs 3,914 pounds, and you could tow up to 1,500 pounds with this particular SUV. So nice to see those MPGs. Like I said, 40 miles per gallon. That to me is mind blowing. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire this up and see it roll. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Honda CRV. Like I said, this is the Sport Hybrid L. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, lay it on me. I've been looking for a new vehicle. I need something that I'm gonna teach my teenager to drive on. I want it to be easy. I just hope that my teenager will always tell me the truth because that's the only way they're gonna be able to share the CRV with me and I let them drive it as if they tell me the truth. Well, first of all, let me tell you something. You know how you know when a teenager is lying? When their lips are moving. Second of all, let's get down to the nitty gritty. CRV, this hybrid Sport L, you're looking at MSRP of $38,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. I like the simple style that they bring. Soft touch material throughout the whole upper portion of the door panel. You have this almost like a, a golf ball texture black material. It's gonna hide the fingerprints nicely and it's just something a little different. On the armrest, you'll notice the orange stitching, that's for the sport, soft armrest, no gloss black, and a door pocket, that's decent. You could get a Whopper in there, you could get some nuggets and some onion rings and a large shake to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, this is my fave. I love the way Honda does this wire mesh to hide all the AC vents and everything. You got more of that textured Tiger Wood style golf ball trim. And like I said, look, I'm touching it, no fingerprints. And then what do you have for infotainment system? You're gonna have your standard nine inch infotainment system screen. You can get your power flow. Look at that, super color graphics and everything. Obviously you got all the usual apps that you're used to in a Honda product. I throw it into reverse. Their backup cameras need some help. 
like desperately. I look, I feel like I'm looking at an old VHS JVC video footage of one of my dad's old cameras that he used to film us at, at the holidays and stuff. It's a touch screen and you could adjust the angles, but it's just too grainy. I would like it that improved. So that's a zonk. Working your way down, you do have nice dual climate controls, three stages of heated seats, no ventilated seats on this trim. Down below, you got a USB-C, USB-A, and a 12 volt wireless charging, a place for a nice bag of Big League Chew. And if you don't like push button transmissions, this one has a real shifter, orange shift, uh, orange shifting, orange stitching on the shifter boot. It is a direct drive transmission. You do have your drive mode, mode selector switch, hill descent control, two cup holders. There's your standard Honda key fob. It's a good size. It's not gonna poke you in your junk, which is good. You do have a Twinkie tray, perfectly right there. Softly, that soft touch with the stitching. Open it up and guess what? You have enough room in here for an NFL regulation football. So you know how you were at the Super Bowl and you got Taylor Swift to sign your balls? You could actually put that signed football in here. There's plenty of room. Seats, the material, nice soft leather. Love the stitching, the bolstering. Power assist for the passenger, power assist for the driver, and you do get a standard size sunroof. Not, not too shabby. Coming over to the business end though, I wanna show you behind the wheel in this Honda CRV. All right guys, business time behind the wheel. You do have two memory seat settings. You do have your seat controls, easy to get to. And with those two memory seat settings, what's nice is like I said, if you're gonna let your teenager, whether it's your son or daughter, borrow this vehicle, um, they'll be able to have their own seat setting and not screw up yours. But remember, like I said, the way you tell if a teenager is lying is if their lips are moving. Six feet tall, I feel good as can be in here. Seats are comfortable and supportive. Steering wheel, love the leather, the orange stitching throughout. A little bit of shiny material, not too bad. Flat black on the switch gear. You do have paddles to go through the simulated gears and it is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then you have your dash. I wish that they would just give us a full freaking dash already. You have a seven inch digital display, which when I go through the different modes, you can see normal, sport, snow, build a snowman, go up to sport, go on a racetrack. I, I just don't like the analog speedometer. It, it, it kind of cheapens the whole effect, but it is what it is, as they say. Let's go ahead, let's get in the back seat and see if your CRV has enough room for your friends. Let's get back there. All right, guys, back seat time. And what I love about this is that you got plenty of room in here. One of the ways that you get some extra room is look at how flat the floor is. I mean, it's low and it's fairly flat. That's gonna help with leg room. The zonk is you don't have a pocket behind the driver. So don't sit behind the driver if you got a bunch of stuff in your hands that you need a pocket. But you do have rear AC vents two USB-Cs, I chose correctly, I'm in the passenger, behind the passenger, so I have the pocket up here, put a couple Annie Ann's pretzels, love Annie's Ann's pretzels, Annie Ann's pretzels, let me, I gotta slow it down a little bit. I also used to love Sabaro, but check it out, look at the way they recline. And one thing you'll notice too is, is when you recline, it actually moves the bottom portion of the seat as well, especially when you go to fold it down. Watch when you fold the seat down. You see how that seat is moving the bottom portion, which allows you to have more room. See it, look. Let's do a replay. Boop, boop, boop. So you get to see exactly how that seat moves. That's unique to the CRV. Your RAV4 can't do that. The seats can go down, but they don't move like that. I promise you. But let's get into the cargo area because I want to see what I could put in the CRV and show it off to you. Let's go check it out. All right guys, time to get in that cargo area. You're just gonna hit the button right underneath the H. We all know what H stands for, right? Honda. Back of the cargo area, on the hybrid, you're gonna have a little less room, just a little less room than on the standard internal combustion engine CRV. This has 34 cubic feet of space. Let me show you what I like. These large nooks, a box of Twinkies, <laughs> Easily on that side, you could put a gallon of Yoohoo, and your Yoohoo isn't going to slide around. Nobody wants their Yoohoo sliding around the back of a CRV. You do have a 12 volt, 
especially this is good when you go to the beach and the kids want that giant raft blown up, get yourself an electric air compressor and save your oxygen for your lungs so you can live instead of blowing up that damn raft, which they'll probably use for five minutes and then not use it anymore. Now, the one challenge if you go hybrid is the electric battery, the battery pack is underneath the cargo floor. So there is no under cargo storage, but you can of course fold the seats down 60, 40 split to take that 34 cubic feet of space up to 60 cubic feet of space. So that's the good news. But while we get to the better news, what the heck is that? That's all about in the driving. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go for a little spin in the CRV. All right, guys, we're leaving Tampa Honda and we're inside this 2024 Honda CRV Sport Hybrid L. Right away, it just makes sense how everything is so well laid out in this vehicle. Getting to the AC controls, getting to the infotainment system, and even though I don't like the analog speedometer. The rest of the dash is very, very easy to read, very easy to understand. Now, when you're going down the road, visibility out the front is fantastic. Out the back, really good as well. And then of course you are getting that uh, regen braking for that battery pack. And very very smooth like one thing i like about this car this v, uh, suv i should say is that when the engine turns on and off it's not like this real drastic situation it's actually fairly smooth and i like that i'm gonna go ahead and put in sport mode that's gonna adjust everything with the engine the steering the throttle all that good stuff and we're gonna get out on the highway and see how this thing drives down the road but uh, let me slow down nobody's behind me which is shocking because I'm in Tampa, but we're gonna go on throttle, here we go. So simulated shifts. The simulated shifts are the saving grace in this vehicle because it allows the RPMs to drop and that allows the buzzing of the engine to not be so high. So that's the really good news about having those simulated gears. But going down the road, the seats are comfy and that's important because you're gonna get crazy range out of this vehicle with 40 miles to the gallon in the city. I mean, that's just like absolutely mind blowing. And then of course, the rest of the time, you're going to be able to go down the road and just feel very, very comfortable behind the wheel. I think that's the one thing that you gotta remember is that the comfort level is so important because of that great range. And I like the way it displays. You could put it on the dash. I could bring it up for the passengers to see how that power is being sent to the wheels with the electric motor, with the battery. You do have your ability to get that regen braking and you could adjust the levels of regen braking more or less with the paddles. So the paddles are not for simulated gears. The paddles are for the different levels of regen braking. And to get into your regen braking, you just take the shifter and put it on B, on the letter B for braking. And then you could make that adjustment. And what it does is it increases the amount of arrows for more or less regen braking. There is no one pedal brake operation with this vehicle. So I just wanna point that out. That's just another way for you to get a little bit extra regeneration of the battery in this vehicle. But going down the road, it just, it's very, very smooth. I love all of the finishes. Everywhere you're putting your arm, putting your hand, Putting any of your body parts, so to speak, is very soft, very comfortable. You got your wireless charging, your USB-Cs, USB-As, all that good stuff, easy to get to, and lots of storage in this vehicle. Not a lot of road noise, a little bit of wind noise, but remember we do have a sunroof and we do have those roof rails 
But the road noise is actually very minimal in here, which is nice. But I'm hoping that this has been a good, quick overall review of the CRV Sport Hybrid L. We're gonna get back to Tampa Honda and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, been a great day here in Tampa Bay. You see what I did there? I'm a poet and I didn't even freaking know it. But anyways, gotta thank Sam and the rest of the people here at Tampa Honda getting us access to this 2024 CRV Sport Hybrid L. Let me know what you think. Are you going CRV or do you like your letters and numbers a little differently? Would you rather go with the RAV4 from Toyota? Let me know down in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rice family. Got to give it up, Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. Follow him on Instagram because from what I hear, Stephen is going to upload his upgrading of his photos. So he's going to actually bring more photography and more photos to his Instagram. So give him a follow, S Flood Photo. I think that sums it up. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.